outlook, but our next guest maintains his neutral rating on the stock. DA Davidson's Gil Loria joins us now. He's a $300 price target on Salesforce. Uh, Gil, thank you for being here. So you did a deep dive into how software companies are utilizing AI for their customers. Salesforce and Palantir were the two companies that you studied here. You have neutral ratings on both of those. What did you find in your investigation and in, in kind of looking into their utilization of AI and why maintain that neutral rating given those findings? Yeah, so for Salesforce, uh, the tools are probably two to three years away from being meaningful. Investors are getting really excited today because the notion of agent force, of agents doing tasks for us is exciting and there's some good early feedback from customers. So investors were willing to look past what was a pretty bad quarter in, with that excitement going forward. Revenue decelerated almost across the board for Salesforce. In its data cloud, they call it integration and analytics now. Growth was 25% two quarters ago, it was 5% this quarter. So that agent force really has to start driving growth in a meaningful way next year to justify the stock price and the stock reaction today. So on Salesforce, I'd say we're a little early. We're maybe two, three years early in getting excited before these tools do well. With Palantir, Palantir has done phenomenally well in the last couple of years because they had the right product at the right place. They were able to go to companies and say, I can get you an AI tool in six months that you can show the board and, and show that you're doing something in AI. And it's driven revenue acceleration. They've had the best results of any software company. They're also trading at 50 times revenue, 150 times cash flow. So we're a little late on Palantir. So, um, you know, one of the, the notions previously was this idea that AI was taking capital, taking investor attention away from software. Do you think that some of the excitement today, perhaps with regard to Salesforce, is just this idea that, yes, we're in early innings, but if they do have a product that is scalable, maybe we'll start to, you know, kind of assuage some of those earlier concerns? That's exactly right. That's exactly what we're seeing. For the last couple of years, Attention was on semis and hardware and, and picks and shovels. And now, uh, and that was the shiny object in the room that everybody wanted to invest in and, and buy. And now we're, we are getting into that mode where everybody comes back and realizes, well, for all this to work, it has to work at the software layer. It has to work at the application layer. That's why you're seeing software broadly up today, broadly up over the last few weeks as people realize that for these tools to work, they're gonna to have to come through software. The thing is, we are still early. That's why we prefer the companies that, that give you the ability to build these tools. Amazon with Amazon Web Services, um, Snowflake with analytical databases, even Meta with its Llama models. Everybody's gonna need those to build these tools, but it's gonna take times for the tools to be ready for prime time and investors may be getting ahead of themselves a little bit, but the, the shift towards software is the right one. We are going to see that over the next couple of years.